Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. On May 31st, 2013, a 3-kilometer asteroid called QE2 passed within 3.6 million miles of Earth. Astronomers used the opportunity to take radar images of the asteroid and its 750-meter satellite. The scientists describe QE2 as dark, red, and primitive, and conclude that the asteroid is an entirely new beast, nothing like any asteroid we have visited with a spacecraft. But how does the Electric Universe interpret this apparently anomalous asteroid? Dr. Ellen Howell, a US RA research astronomer at Arecibo Observatory, who took both radar images of the asteroid at Arecibo and optical and infrared images using the infrared telescope facility in Hawaii, said, what makes this asteroid so interesting, aside from being an excellent target for radar imaging, is the color and the small moon. Asteroid QE2 is dark, red, and primitive. That's her description, and of course, primitive is just an interpretation. She goes on to say, that is, it hasn't been heated or melted as much as other asteroids. She says QE2 is nothing like any asteroid we've visited with a spacecraft or plan to, or that we have meteorites from. It's an entirely new beast in the menagerie of asteroids near Earth. Now, the idea that this is uh, quite different from all other asteroids and meteorites, of course, may be more apparent than real. Because if we go back and have a, a look at something uh, that was said earlier by Dr. Patrick Taylor, another USRA research astronomer at Arecibo, uh, he said that um, approximately one out of six asteroids near Earth have moons. And this is a very interesting and difficult to explain attribute of asteroids. Dr. Tom, Tom Van Flanden uh, in his book, Dark Matter, Missing Planets and New Comets, writes, in fact, many minor satellites of asteroids would either fall onto the surface of their parent or escape into their own solar orbit within 10,000 to 10 million years or so. With such a short time scale for orbital evolution by tides, these satellites ought not to be as abundant as they seem to be, unless they had a recent origin. This fits precisely with the Electric Universe model, which suggests that asteroids, comets, meteorites, all of the debris that's floating around in the solar system, were produced in close encounters between planets in the recent past. And those encounters involved electrical exchanges, which actually tore matter from the bodies of the planets and hurled it into space. This would fit both with the fact that the asteroids are found in certain belts in the solar system, and it also fits with the observation that so many of these asteroids and smaller bodies in the solar system have satellites. The idea is that if these objects were formed in an explosion, as Tom Van Flanden pointed out, without actually explaining how a planet might explode, then the material is released in the same vicinity and it's also ejected from the gravitational influence of the parent body. Under these circumstances, the influence of the larger pieces of the debris expands and it means that it is able to capture nearby smaller pieces of debris, in other words, to form a satellite. And this is what we find. So Tom Van Flanden's idea is supported, but it's not a planetary explosion. It's something that was actually observed by ancient man, as we've been able to uncover, and that is electrical exchanges, the thunderbolts of the gods, ripped material from the Martian surface in particular. And so the fact that this particular asteroid shows a reddish and strange surface fits the suggestion that it is probably a piece of Martian surface that we're looking at, and its satellite also would have been captured from that same event. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.